Hey, good afternoon, guys. Thank you, Glenda, Tania, and Jenny. Thank you for joining. I'm so sorry, right, that, eh, that we had this inconvenient. But don't worry, yo voy a reponer pues, esos, ocho, esos ocho minutos que nos tardamos en esto. Pero thank you very much. Gracias por acompañarnos, okay? Um, we're going to continue, okay? We're going to continue with the information, right? Um, that means that we're going to be working with the last part of section number five and also the midterm exam because we're going to be working with the midterm exam and also with um, the review that we were working with um, yesterday. So uh, yesterday we were working with simple present or present simple, right? So this is what we are going to be um, a working on the exercises, okay? Uh, let me see if I can activate the camera again. The thing is that sometimes it automatically, eh, automaticamente la quita cuando es mucho, cuando hay muchos, eh, muchas ventanas abiertas, okay? But anyways, I'm here, okay? Uh, what I was saying is that um, we're going to be working with the structure, ¿verdad? Y aquí creo que fue donde nos quedamos y luego nos pasamos a los exercises that I was, that I shared with you yesterday. And also um, the links, para los que no lo pudieron hacer, pues los links quedaron allí, ¿verdad? Quedaron en WhatsApp, so you can go ahead and practice with them, or you can go ahead and, um, um, yeah, like do the exercise again, or to repeat them, para repetirlos. And we stop in uh, section 5.4, okay, 5.4, which is a knowledge check, right? The knowledge check is um, related to the WH question words, okay, that we use in the questions, right? So this one is another exercise that you can find in the 5.4 knowledge check, right? I don't know if you can go ahead and and um, review that. ¿Me, ¿Me pueden revisar, chicos, a ustedes si les aparece ahí este ejercicio? Este no lo hicimos ayer, de acuerdo a mis notas, okay? So let's go ahead and practice with this one, okay? This is a, well, we have two conversations, okay? Dos conversaciones. It says complete the conversations with the correct WH words, right? Then practice with a partner, okay? So number one, is already done. It says, I watch sports on television every weekend. And then the person says, really? What sports do you like to watch? Soccer is my favorite. So, ¿qué, qué, qué palabra o cuál WH word necesitamos en la siguiente pregunta? How? Por ahí dijeron, when. <ríe> Veamos la respuesta. Dice, on Sundays afternoon. O sea, estamos hablando de Tiempo, ¿verdad? Entonces, es correcto. We say, when do you usually watch soccer? Ah, well, actually on Sunday afternoons, ¿verdad? Los domingos por la tarde. Entonces, when talks about time or asks about time, and that's the reason why we use when. What about letter B? Look, vean la respuesta. Dice, no, at my friend's house. He has a really big television. So, what is the WH word that we need here? Where? Okay, where, right? And where do you usually watch it? At home, right? No, at my friend's house. He has a really big television, okay? Now, in conversation number two, look, veamos la respuesta. Dice, oh, about once a month, okay? So what is the WH phrase that we need here? the WH phrase. So you go, ah, once a, once a month or about once a month or every day or once a week, right? So what is the WH phrase that we use for that one? How many? How many is cuantos? ¿Cuál otra opción creen ustedes que puede funcionar? When? When 
it's about time. Y lo que yo estoy dando no es tiempo, es una frecuencia, ¿verdad? Una vez al mes. Entonces, la que necesitamos, recuerden que hay una que es la que vamos a ocupar siempre, siempre, siempre que estemos hablando de la frecuencia con la que hacemos una actividad. En este caso, preguntando con qué frecuencia se hace una actividad y es how often, ¿verdad? How often do you go bike riding? ¿Qué tan frecuente o qué tan a menudo decimos nosotros en... Ay, sorry, I needed to sneeze. ¿Qué tan a menudo, verdad? Eh... Vas tú a bicicletear, decimos nosotros, o a, a, a practicar ciclismo, qué sé yo. Oh, about once a month, right? Eh, I love to go bike riding. I go every Sunday. Really? Entonces le pregunta y la respuesta es usually at about one o'clock. ¿Cuál sería la WH phrase que yo necesito ahí? What do you go? What, pero what es para cosas. What time? Te... Ah, muy bien. What time, ¿ok? ¿A qué hora? ¿Verdad? What time es el que yo uso para una hora específica, ¿verdad? What time do you go? I usually, I mean, usually at about one o'clock. Muy bien. Y la última dice, my sister es la respuesta. ¿Cuál es la WH word que necesitamos acá? ¿Cuál ocupamos para personas? Solo para personas exclusivamente, para un subject. Who, Who muy bien, ¿verdad? Who do you usually go with, right? Ah, my sister. Come with us next time, ¿ok? Now, let's go ahead and read the conversations, ¿ok? Vamos a leer las conversaciones. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Vamos a practicar... Bueno, somos solo chicas hoy, ¿verdad? Así que las cuatro, si ustedes tienen la oportunidad, vamos a practicarla una y una. Glenda, ¿puede practicar conmigo la primera conversación? Can you practice with me? Ok. Vaya, I'm going to be B and you're going to be letter A. I watch for one television every weekend. Really? What sports do you like to watch? Soccer, it's my favorite. Oh, and when do you usually watch soccer? On Sunday afternoon. And where do you usually watch it? At home? No, at my friend's house. He has a really big television. Great. Ahora vamos a intercambiar. I'm going to be letter A, Glenda, and you're going to be letter B, okay? So, I watch sports on television every weekend. Really? What sport do you like to watch? Soccer. It's my favorite. When do you usually watch soccer? On Sunday afternoons. And where do you usually watch it? At home? No. At my friend's house. He has a really big television. Okay, good job. Thank you, Glenda. Okay. Buen trabajo. Now, conversation number two. Jasmine, ¿puede participar, Jasmine? Yes. Very good. So you're going to be letter A. I'm going to be letter uh, letter B, and we're in conversation number two. You begin. Often do you go bike riding? Oh, about once a month. I love to go bike riding. Right. I go every uh, riding. I go every Sunday. Really? What time do you go? Usually at about one o'clock. Oh yeah. Uh, who do you usually go with? My sister, come with, come with you next time. Very good. Come with us. Us, right? Come, come with, with us. us. Very good. Excellent. Now you're going to be letter B and I'm going to be letter A. Okay? So how often do you go bike riding? Oh, about once a month. Once a month. I love to go bike riding. I go every Sunday. Really? When time did you go? Usually at about one o'clock. Oh yeah. Who do you usually who do you usually go with? My sister. Come with us next time. Okay. 
Good job. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Now we're going with uh, Tania, okay? And now let's go to conversation one, Tania. Okay, you're going to be letter A and I'm going to be letter B. Okay. I watch sports on television every weekend. Really? What sports do you like to watch? Soccer. It's my favorite. And when do you usually watch soccer? On Sundays, afternoons. And where do you usually watch it? At home? No, at my friend's house. He has a really big television. Great job. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to be letter A and you're going to be letter B. Okay? okay. So I watch sports on television every weekend. Really? What sports do you like to watch? Soccer. It's my favorite. When do you usually watch soccer? On Sunday afternoons. And where do you usually watch it? At home? No, at my friend's house. He has a really big television, okay? Good job. Thank you so much, Tania. And last but not least, Jenny Marisol, can you participate? ¿Puede participar? Bueno, no sabemos. Yes. Ahí está, pensé que estaba eh, ocupada. Bueno, es que a veces no es que sean ocupadas, es solo que no pueden, no pueden participar, ¿verdad? Porque están haciendo algo. Pero thank you so much. Let's go ahead and move on to conversation two, eh, Jenny. And you're going to be letter A, I'm going to be letter B. So you begin. Usted comienza. Um, how often do you buy reading? Uh, oh, about once a month. I love to go by reading. I go every Sunday. Really? What time do you go? Usually at about one o'clock. Oh, yeah? And who do you usually go with? My sister come with uh, us next time. Very good. Okay, so solo no olvidemos que es bike riding. Riding, right? By, by riding. Vamos ahora con the same conversation, pero yo voy a hacer uh, letter A and you're, and you're going to be letter B, Jenny, okay? So, how often do you go bike riding? Oh, about once a month. I love to go bike riding. I go every Sunday. Really? What time do you go? Um, usually at about one o'clock. Oh, yeah. Who do you usually go with? My sister. Come with us next time. Good job, okay? Excellent, girl. So, very good, you know, uh, very good uh, pronunciation. Just don't forget that one. No olvidemos esa que es bike riding. De ahí por lo demás estuvo súper bien. Now, let's move on to the next exercise. It says complete the conversation with questions. Then you're going to compare with a partner, okay? So it says, what sports do you like? I like a lot of sports, but I really love volleyball, okay? Now, ¿cuál sería la siguiente pregunta, chicas? Bueno, de hecho tenemos one, two, three. Son tres. Hagamos, hagamos algo. Uh, let's go ahead and give some time. Le voy a dar un par de minutos, ¿verdad? Para que ustedes las, las analicen y ustedes me digan cuáles son las que ustedes consideran que van ahí. Bueno, son cuatro, de hecho. I will give you three minutes. Vamos a tomarnos tres minutitos para que ustedes puedan revisar ahí. Y please let me know when you're ready. Avísenme cuando ya esté listo. Recordemos que hoy es la última clase, chicos. Bueno, no sé si les enviaron la invitación para, para el próximo módulo, ¿verdad? Pero hay que estar listos. No sé si ya les mandaron la información. Sí, ya. Ah, ok, perfecto. Ah, ok, bye. Muy bien, pero sí, hay que estar ahí listos de mandar la documentación, ¿verdad? Y no sé en la verdad qué ha sucedido con el resto del grupo, pero esperemos que también ya para la próxima si sí puedan seguir. ¿Alguien sabe, chicas, por qué hubo, bas por qué hubo bastante, es, bastantes estudiantes que no, no, no ingresaron a la clase? Porque hubieron varios, de hecho. 
Nadie. No, teacher. Esa es problema de horario, ¿verdad? Sí, quizás sí, Eso, teacher. ajá, eso se me ocurre porque <ríe> no sabría yo qué más. Dime un momento. Solo voy a conectar algo acá rapidito. A ver. Ahí está. Lástima que Néstor no se conectó hoy. ¿eh? Sorry for the noise. Me siento por el, el ruido porque hay, están haciendo mejoras ahí en la casa de la par. So it seems that it's a little bit loud. <laughs> ¿Ya están listas? Me avisan, please. Veamos. Dice, I finished this, Tanya. Okay, very good. So let's go ahead and um, take a look at the question with letter A. Number one, and two, well, A and B, de la primera pregunta, ya está, porque estamos uh, creando, perdón, escribiendo la pregunta basada en la respuesta. So, Tanya, what will be the question that you have for the second uh, exercise? Uh, who... Do you usually play with? Uh -huh. Muy bien, excelente. Ahí pues hay, hay opciones, ¿verdad? Puede, podemos decirlo así como pues lo preguntó eh, Tania, que está excelente. Who do you usually play with? También podemos decir who do you play with or who do you usually play volleyball with. Cualquiera de todas esas opciones están correctas, ¿ok? Eh, what about the next one? Okay, dice la persona, ah, I usually play with my sister and some friends. ¿Qué tal la siguiente pregunta? Jasmine? When do you play? Muy bien, exacto. Podemos hacerlo de la siguiente manera. Podemos decirlo como lo dijo Jasmine, when do you play? O también podemos decir, when do you practice? O podemos preguntar, when do you practice volleyball or when do you play volleyball? Cualquiera de todas esas opciones es correcta. Muy bien. Y luego dice, we practice on Saturdays. Okay, so what would be the question there? Mm 
Dice, we practice on Saturday. Y la respuesta a esa es, we start at about noon. How often do you start? Mm, how no. often es para frecuencia de una actividad. Pero ahí dice, we start at about noon. O sea, alrededor de las 12 del mediodía. What time? Muy bien. Okay, what time do you start? What time do you start? Ah, oh, we start, uy, perdón, todo el escritorio me vi, sorry. We start at about noon, ¿verdad? Comenzamos alrededor de las 12. Muy bien. And then the next one, it says, um, we usually play in our yard, but sometimes we play at the beach. So what will be the, uh, the question there? Where do you start? Mm -hmm. Where do you play? ¿verdad? Where do you play? Where do you play or where do you play volleyball? Cualquiera de las dos está bien. Where do you play or where do you play volleyball? Eh, estaría correcto. Muy bien. Excelente. Now, take a look at here. Okay. Here we have a conversation. Okay. Uh, I would like you to practice, please. Me gustaría que practicaran ustedes, chicas. Vamos, dice... Ah, ok, Jenny, que lo siento. Sí, también este, de repente la señal se pone un poco caprichosa. ¿Sabe? A veces, chicos, bueno, chicas, porque solo estamos chicas hoy, lo que sucede es que, vaya, si nosotros vamos a tener clase, por ejemplo, en mi caso, ¿verdad? Yo tengo que siempre avisar y decir, hey, voy a dar clase, entonces, por favor, no se conecten a ninguna, ¿verdad? Ninguna streaming platform, las streaming platforms como Netflix, por dar un ejemplo, esas pues obviamente van a, a consumir bastante recurso. Entonces, si hay alguien que está ocupando eh, una streaming platform mientras usted está en clase o hay otras aplicaciones abiertas, ¿verdad? Etcétera, todo eso va a afectar al momento pues de tomar la clase y, y la va a estar desconectando. Pero si la señal es muy débil también donde usted está, sucede lo mismo, ¿verdad? Que nos empieza a desconectar y a conectar. Okay, así que, but let's go ahead and practice. Vamos a practicar. So, eh, Glenda and Jasmine, Glenda and Jasmine, please, ayúdenme con la conversación. Glenda comience con letter A y Jasmine continúe con letter B. Okay. Uh, what's for me like? I like a lot of this. Teacher, ¿cómo se pronuncia ahí? A lot of sports. A lot of sports, thank you. I like a lot of sports. But I really love volleyball. Oh, do you play with? I usually play with my sister and some friends. When do you practice volleyball? We practice on Saturday. Saturday. <clears throat> what time do you, do you start? We start at about noon. Where do you play volleyball? We usually play in our yard, but sometimes we play on the beach. Very good. Good job, girls. Thank you. Vamos ahora con Tania y Jenny Marisol. Tania, ayúdame con letter eh, B. Y Jenny Marisol, ayúdame con letter A. What sport do you like? I like a lot of sports. But I really love volleyball. What do, what do you usually play volleyball with? I usually play with my sister and some friends. When do you practice play volleyball? We practice on Saturdays. What time do you start? We start at about noon. Where do you play volleyball? We usually play in our yard, but sometimes we play at the beach. Very good. Good job, okay? So actually here we have some questions, right? So what sports do you like? Okay. Um, the, the questions that we have, and, and this, is, this is like the main question, right? I'm going to type them here. Lo vamos a poner acá. 
So the first one is what sports do you like? Okay. What sports do you like? Okay. Entonces, cuando queremos pues tener una conversación con alguien, ¿verdad? Eh, podemos ir agregando las mismas preguntas. And who do you usually? Pueden agregar usually. Who do you usually play with? Sea lo que sea que les han dicho, ¿verdad? Who do you usually eh, play? Ya sea play u otro verbo, ¿verdad? Or who do you usually go with, etc. Eh, then the next question is when do you practice? Or when do you play, ¿verdad? Ahí pues usted agrega el, el nombre del, del, del deporte, ¿verdad? When, who, when do you practice? Or when do you play soccer, por ejemplo, ¿verdad? Eh, what time do you start, okay? What time do you start? ¿Qué horas comienzas esa práctica? And where do you play or where do you go, right? Ahí, where do you play, sea cual sea el deporte que la persona pues juega, ¿verdad? O where do you go, ahí depende, okay? Eh, where do you go bike riding, por ejemplo? ¿Verdad? Acordémonos como el día de ayer vimos que hay cierta, ciertos deportes o ciertas, eh, ¿cómo lo puedo llamar? Eh, actividades, ¿verdad? Que lo vamos a usar con ING. Entonces, we have to be ready when that happens, ¿ok? Eh, let me see. Ya está cargando, ¿ok? Ahí está. Entonces, le voy a compartir estas preguntas también, ¿verdad? Por eso les, les pide acá, ¿verdad? Ask your partner five questions about sports and then tell the class, right? Here we have one, two, three, four, those five questions that you can use, right, to practice a little bit with that, okay? Oh, my goodness, otra vez esta cámara. Bueno. Vale, le voy a compartir esta de acá, ¿verdad? Ahí tienen. Ah, y también si gustan, vamos a compartir esta otra, ¿verdad? Que fueron las conversaciones que practicamos, ¿verdad? Que lo hicieron súper bien, ¿ok? Y esta de acá, ¿verdad? Que contiene las preguntas, pues, que hemos visto, ¿verdad? Ahí está. Very good. Ok, entonces ahorita ya nos vamos moviendo a la siguiente, a la siguiente actividad. It says, by the end of this class, you will learn to sound natural when using can and can't. ¿Verdad? Ya en esta parte de acá, pues vamos a hablar un poquito acerca de can and can't, que es cuando nosotros hablamos de ability, ability of doing something, la habilidad de poder hacer algo. Ok, entonces... Um, also, it's a little bit, you know, tricky when we're using can and can't. Y, y pues, la, a, a veces yo, por ejemplo, para no confundir, siempre digo can and cannot. Lo uso full, la full form. Y casi no uso la contracción. O si no, también tienen la opción británica. ¿verdad? I can't, can't. And in North American English, is can't. ¿Verdad? And that T sound, it's... We try like to uh, stress it, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver, ya, 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 ya vamos también a cargar esa parte de la plataforma para que podamos escuchar también de ahí. Bueno, tenemos esta parte de acá, ¿verdad? Que es la parte de can and can't. And um, whenever, you know, we, we work with, um, with this section, I like to point out that It's not, um, ¿cómo les puedo decir? It's, no es, no es este, eh, necesario si usted de repente no quiere decir la, la, la contracción, puede decir la forma contractada. Sin embargo, debo de admitir que la forma más, más usada, ¿verdad? Es la forma contractada. Así que vamos a escuchar el siguiente video, ¿verdad? Que nos explica un poquito al respecto. Ah, solo déjeme compartir el sonido. Ahí está. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn to sound natural when using can and can't. Let's start by listening to the pronunciation of can and can't. Can and can't. Notice the pronunciation of can and can't. I can act. 
but I can't sing very well. This is a very simple pronunciation. If you notice the positive statement, I can act. Above the word, you can see how that is pronounced. Can as the pronunciation symbol. On the other hand, the negative statement is pronounced differently. We will pronounce it as can't. Another tip that I would like to mention here is when it comes to negative statements which are contracted, we can also follow the simple rule. If there's a contraction which ends in NT, you can think of extending that N. Let me illustrate that. I can't sing very well. This trick can also help with pronunciation. English pronunciation is not an easy topic and it requires a lot of listening and practicing. I would like to encourage you to practice these two simple phrases. Practice by listening and repeating. Do this several times until you feel like it's not difficult for you. Hi everyone. Sorry, I was talking on mute. I was saying, um, I'm going to play it one more time. Voy a poner una vez más. In this class, you'll learn to sound natural when using can and can't. Let's start by listening to the pronunciation of can and can't. Can and can't. Notice the pronunciation of can and can't. I can act, but I can't sing very well. This is a very simple pronunciation. If you notice the positive statement, I can act. Above the word, you can see how that is pronounced. Can, as the pronunciation symbol. On the other hand, the negative statement is pronounced differently. We will pronounce it as can't. Another tip that I would like to mention here is, when it comes to negative statements, which are contracted, we can also follow the simple rule. If there's a contraction which ends in NT, you can think of extending that N. Let me illustrate that. I can't sing very well. This trick can also help with pronunciation. English pronunciation is not an easy topic and it requires a lot of listening and practicing. I would like to encourage you to practice these two simple phrases. Practice by listening and repeating. Do this several times until you feel like it's not difficult for you. Very good. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the information here. So one of the tips or tricks, you know, that the instructor is telling you is that whenever we are working with can and can't, we need to along, right? Or we need to prolong, right? The sound of the letter N. ¿verdad? Esa letra N, nos tardamos un poquito más, ¿verdad? la pronunciación es un poquito más extendida, que en can't. I can dance, I can sing, I can act, or I can act, right? I can swim, I can use a computer, I can eh, cook, right? Etc. And then with can't, right, you just make that sound a little bit more long, I mean, I mean a little bit longer, right? It's, it lasts a little bit longer and you say, I can't, I can't sing, I can't act, I can't dance, I can't swim, right? I can sing, I can't sing, I can act, I can't act. I can dance, I can't dance. I can swim, I can't swim. That sound, just try to, you know, also include it, right? So that the listener can understand that we're using the negative form of this, okay? So questions about this, girls? Preguntas? No. No yet, Bye. perfect. So this, let's move on to um, talk a little bit about the topic, okay? So we're moving towards, you know, section or point uh, 5.7, you know, lesson objective. And in here it says, by the end of this class, you will learn how to ask and answer questions using can for ability, right? We know that, uh, uh, 
it's a common topic. It's a well-known topic. Es un tema pues bastante, eh, eh, digamos, popular porque aprendemos bien rápido a decir lo que podemos y lo que no podemos hacer, ¿verdad? Entonces, let's go ahead and listen to the conversation, right? There's a conversation here related to the topic, right? And the conversation is... I can't sing. That's a conversation, okay? So I'm going to play the conversation for you. Take a look at the picture, right? And there is a, there is an ad, an advertisement. Can you sing or act? Be a star. TV talent contest, Saturday, 9 a.m. And we had two people were, I mean, talking here, having a conversation. So let's go ahead and listen to that conversation right now. Hi everyone, in this class you'll learn to ask and answer questions using can for ability. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, I can't sing very well. This conversation illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. I can't sing. Oh look, there's a talent contest on Saturday. Let's enter. I can't enter a talent contest. What can I do? You can sing really well. Oh, thanks. Well, you can too. Oh, no. I can't sing at all. But I can play the piano. So maybe we can enter the contest. Sure. Why not? Okay. Let's practice tomorrow. Now let's analyze the example. Okay, I'm going to go back to the conversation one more time. ...illustrates how this topic is used in a real-life setting. I can't sing. Oh, look. There's a talent contest on Saturday. Let's enter. I can't enter a talent contest. What can I do? You can sing really well. Oh, thanks. Well, you can too. Oh, no. I can't sing at all. But I can play the piano. So maybe we can enter the contest. Sure. Why not? Okay. Let's practice tomorrow. Now let's analyze the examples. On Oops, the... I'm going to stop there, okay? And then we're going to talk about the usage of can and can't, right? So let's go ahead and, um, you know, try to, to, to break down, you know, the conversation here. So uh, I would like, you know, um, all of you can, uh, if all of you can practice the conversation, okay? Can I have a Glenda and Jasmine help me with the first conversation. Glenda, you me con Kyla. Y Jasmine, you me con Philip, please. Oh, look, there's a talent contest on Saturday. Let's enter. I can't enter a talent contest. What can, what can I do? You can sing really well. Oh, thanks. Well, you can too? Oh, no. I can't sing all out at all, but I can play the piano. So maybe we can enter the concert. Sure. Why not? Okay. Let's practice tomorrow. Very good. Okay, the contest, right? The contest is the um, concurso, ¿verdad? Muy bien. Thank you so much, Glenda and Jasmine, Tania and Jenny. Tania, please, ayúdame con Kyla y Jenny, ayúdame con Philip. Okay. Oh, look, there's a talent contest on Saturday. Let's enter. I can enter a talent contest. What can I do? You can sing really well. Oh, thanks. Well, you can too. Oh, no. I can't sing at all, but I can play the piano. So maybe we can enter the contest. Sure. Why not? Okay. Let, let's practice tomorrow. Very good. Excellent, girls. Thank you so much. Now, uh, whenever we're talking about uh, ability, as I was saying before, it's when we say um, the things that we are able to do and the things that we are unable to do, right? So if we pay attention to the conversation, right, over here, 
Oh, um, let me use this, okay? It says, I can't enter a Italian contest, right? I can't or I cannot. Uh, you can sing very well, right? Oh, well, you can too, right? No, I can't sing at all. But, but I can play the piano, right? So maybe we can enter the contest, right? So, well, let's go ahead and listen, you know, to the rest of the video to have a better understanding on how we can use the the topic uh, related to can and can't. In this case, the, the structure itself, okay? So I'm going to play it and then we're going to, uh, I'm going to retake the, uh, the explanation and you're going to uh, practice a little bit with some exercises. This chart. Can for ability. I can sing very well. You can sing very well. He can sing very well. She can't sing at all. We can't sing at all. They can't sing at all. Can you sing? Yes, I can. No, I can't. Can I sing? Yes, you can. No, you can't. Can he sing? Yes, he can. No, he can't. Can she sing? Yes, she can. No, she can't. Can we sing? Yes, we can. No, we can't. Can they sing? Yes, they can. No, they can't. What can I do? You can sing. Who can sing? Philip can. I would like to explain the usage of can. We can use can to express some kind of ability, whether that is related to sports, professional, something artistic, or something special. Singing is something that only a few people can do, and most people can't. In my case, I can't sing at all. Let me get started by explaining how to form statements with can. To do this, we can follow this formula. Subject plus can or can't plus the verb plus complement. Now let's analyze a couple of examples. I can sing very well. Now the subject is I. Then we're going to add can. After that, we have the verb sing. Uh, finally, we have a complement. Mm -hmm. Let's analyze one more example. She can't sing at all. The subject is she. Then we're going to add can't. After that, we have the verb sing. Finally, we can include a complement at all. Now let's learn how to form questions using can. To do this, we can follow this formula. The auxiliary can plus subject plus the verb plus a complement. Let's analyze a couple of examples to make sure we understand this topic. Can you sing? First, we need to add the auxiliary can. After that, we include the subject. Next, we have the verb sing and a question mark. Finally, we can include a complement. In these examples, there is no complement, but we could add something like at home. These are yes or no questions. So the way to answer this type of questions is quite simple. For the question, can you sing? We can answer positively by saying, yes, I can. And we can answer negatively by saying, no, I can't.
Let's analyze one last example. Can he sing? First, we need the auxiliary verb can. After that, we include the subject he. Next, we have the verb sing and a question mark at the end. We can answer positively by saying, yes, he can. And we can answer negatively by saying, no, he can't. Now it's your turn to practice using can and can't. I would like for you to talk about your abilities and the abilities of your friends, family, and co-workers. For example, I can play tennis, but I can't play basketball. My coworker can design websites. But he can't program. OK, I'm going to start there the explanation that we have from the platform. And now I will go with mine. Ahora voy yo con la mía, OK? So let's go ahead and continue, you know, talking about this um, structure that the um, this the, the, the instructor, right, uh, was telling you about. So whenever we use can and can't, as we were saying, we're talking about positive sentences, we're talking about negative sentences, we're talking about questions, okay? Now, what happens is that uh, first, we need to give it a name. Necesitamos darle un nombre a can't. Entonces, can es un verbo modal. It's a modal verb, ¿verdad? ¿Y qué, 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 qué quiero decir con eso? Que genialmente, ¿verdad? It, it means that, in a way, that's great because I don't have to worry about uh, modifying my verbs. No me tengo que preocupar en lo absoluto por modificar ningún verbo porque él prácticamente lo que hace al estar ahí es llamar al verbo principal sin modificarlo en su forma base, por decirlo así. Entonces, um, we have here a can plus the base form, que es la forma en la que nosotros lo vamos a usar. Por supuesto, ya sea can or can't, ¿verdad? Entonces, eso que ustedes ven acá, todo esto acá abajo es la fórmula que necesitan, o sea, los elementos que ustedes necesitan que son los que el instructor les estaba, les estaba presentando. Entonces, ¿cómo vamos a hacer? Bueno, whenever we need to use it, ¿verdad? We have to remember that we need a subject that we can have can or can't, o en su forma cannot, que es su forma completa, and then the base form of the verb. Okay, so I don't have to modify anything at all, right? Then, if I'm asking questions, si hago preguntas, solo hay un switch, hay un cambio. ¿Y cuál es ese? Between the subject and the auxiliary. So the auxiliary comes at the beginning. We have the subject and we have the verb at the end, right? So whenever you're making up your sentences, you just make sure that you're using right the, the, the right setting or the right um, pattern, you know, that we need to follow uh, in the structure, okay? So take a look at the two sentences. I can play the piano. Can you open the door, please? Right? Obviously, más adelante van a ver can para, para permission y para requests, ¿verdad? But right now we're studying uh, can for ability, pero quiero que sepan que lo podemos usar también para pedir permisos y también para... Eh, para eh, ¿Cómo les puedo decir en español? Uh, para pedir algo, ¿verdad? Permisos, pero también para, para, para hacer requests, como para hacer requerimientos, ¿ok? Entonces, eh, whenever you say, when you, whenever you use I can, or you say I can't, that means that you can do something. O sea, I know how to do it, or it is possible for me to do it. Sé cómo hacerlo o es posible para mí hacerlo porque tengo el conocimiento, tengo la habilidad o tengo lo que se necesita para hacerlo, ¿verdad? Entonces, here we have some sentences. I can play the piano. My brother can play the piano too. Sandra can speak Italian. 
but she can't speak Spanish, right? Can you swim? Yes, but I'm not a very good swimmer. Can you change a $20 bill? I'm sorry, I can't. I'm having a party next week, but Eric and Rachel can't come, right? So all of those sentences, you know, explain or exemplifies, ejemplifica, or exemplifies the information that I was explaining before, right? I can do something. I know how to do it, or it is possible for me to do it. That is whenever I use can for ability, right? So, cuando ya me paso a las preguntas, puedo hacerlo de la siguiente forma. With use, can you, when we ask people to do things, cuando le pedimos a la gente que haga cosas por nosotros, ¿verdad? Can you open the door, please? Can you wait a minute, please? We use, can I have to ask for something? For example, can I have a glass of water, please? O me puede dar agua, un vaso con agua, por favor? ¿Verdad? Can I have a sandwich, please, with a soda? ¿Verdad? ¿Me puede dar un sándwich con una soda, por favor? Can I? Is it okay to do something? ¿Está bien hacer esto? Can I sit here? ¿Me puedo sentar aquí? Tom, can I borrow your umbrella? Puedo tomar prestada tu sombría, ¿verdad? Entonces, whenever we use can I, o sea, la parte de la pregunta va a significar eh, diferentes cosas, ¿verdad? Una dijimos es eh, we ask people to do things. Le pedimos a la gente que haga cosas. Dos, to ask for something. Si yo le, pregunto, le pido a alguien que haga algo, can you, puedes, can you. Si yo quiero que me den algo, can I have. Si yo pregunto si está bien hacer algo, can I, can I sit here, teacher? Can I, can I um, work in exercise three? Can I um, complete the exercise later? So all of those sentences, you know, include can I. Questions, preguntas, chicas, hasta el momento? Questions about this? No? Okay, let's continue then. No. Okay, very good. So let's go ahead and continue. Okay, it says ask John if he can do these things. Okay, ¿cómo vamos a trabajar este ejercicio? Vaya. Le voy a yo ayudar con el primero y ustedes van a hacer el segundo. La primera, John le va a preguntar a él, ¿verdad? Can you swim? Número uno. Can you swim? Okay. Ahora bien, ustedes van a completar two, three, four, five, and six. Y luego le va a poner acá, can you do these things? Write sentences about yourself. Use I can or I can't. Luego va a usar los mismos verbos y va a decir sus oraciones, si usted puede o no puede hacerlos, ¿ok? So for this one, I'm going to give you five minutes. Les daré cinco minutitos y esos cinco minutitos comienzan ahora. También se lo voy a pasar por, por, por el chat, quizás. Vamos a regresar acá. Lo vamos a poner en el chat para que ahí lo, lo tengan también, para que lo puedan ver. Ahí está.
puts his ass strong, he can he can do the same. So you're asking John, can you swim? Okay, what about number two? Question two. Can you go ice skating? Okay, that's a very good try. Okay, and in this case, solo pusemos el verbo. Puedo puedo decir también, can you go ski? Can you ski? Perdón. Can you go? Can you go? Can you ski? Right? Puedes esquiar. Okay. Go ice skating. Ya sería pues. Uh, creo que es patinaje sobre hielo. What about number three? Can you play chess? Can you play chess? Very good. Okay, excellent. That's number three. What about number four? Can you run? Can you run 10 kilometers? Wow. Uh-huh. Can you run 10 kilometers? Very good. Okay. What about number five? Can you drive? Can you drive? Can you drive a car? Can you drive? Yeah. Number six. Can you horse riding? It ride, I mean, horse riding is activity. Pero el verbo, ¿cómo nos quedaría? Sería. Um, ride? Uh -huh. Can you ride a horse? Muy bien. Can you ride a horse? Now, luego dice, can you do these things? Okay, can you do these things? Write sentences about yourself acerca de usted, ¿ok? ¿Alguna voluntaria que nos quiera compartir si puede o no puede hacer esas cosas? No, I cannot. <laughs> no, I cannot. Ok, very good. Now, let's go with sentences. Vamos, vámonos por las oraciones. A ver, voluntarias para decirnos las oraciones que usted puede y no puede hacer. Eh, Tania, please. I can swim. Swimming. I can swim. What else? I can't write. Okay. I can run 10 kilometers. I can't. Okay, and um I can't skip. Okay, very good. Muy bien. As you can see, I mean, it's it's a very um, uh, easy topic, right? Uh, when it comes to use it. So let's go ahead and move on to the next exercise. Pero para este, pues es super cortito, so I'm going to give you just three minutes. Okay, so you have three minutes to complete this one. And your three minutes begin right now.
chicas, ¿estamos listas? Eran bien corticas, ¿ok? Vaya, perfecto. Vamos entonces con number one. Volunteer for number one. Bueno, pueden abrir sus micrófonos si ustedes gustan también. Eh, I'm sorry, but we cannot come to your party next Saturday. Very good, exactly. You can say, I'm sorry, but we cannot come, or I'm sorry, we can't come to your next uh, to your party next Saturday. Muy bien. Number two, Jasmine. Uh, I, I, I like this hotel room. You feel the mountain from the window. Hmm. No, actually, it's a different answer. I like this hotel room. You can see the mountain from the window. Correct, right? You can see. Porque uh, sí se puede ver la montaña desde sí la ventana. Mm -hmm. Entonces, you can see the mountain from the window. Uh, what about number three? Glenda? Hello. <laughs> oh, perdón, es de Jasmine, no sé. Tres. Uh -huh. uh, you are speaking very quiet. Quietly. I, uh, quietly. I can hear you. Very good. I can't hear you right. Muy suavecito está hablando. What about number four? Number four. Anyone? Have you seen my back? I cannot find it. I cannot find it. Very good. Have you seen my bag? I cannot find it or I can't find it. Okay. What about number five? La última. Catherine got the job because she can speak five languages. Exactly. Because she can speak five languages, right? Es una persona que sabe mucho en de que that can speak a lot of languages, right? Muy bien, excelente, okay? Now, let's go ahead and move on to the next exercise. Now, en este, hacemos la pregunta, okay? Y entre paréntesis está el verbo que ustedes necesitan. Todas las preguntas van con can you, can I, etc. Okay, now for this one, este es diferente, así que for this one, I will give you four minutes, pero no sé dónde está el de cuatro, aquí está. I'm going to give you four minutes. I know it's seis. Ah, se tiene ocho, se tiene doce, se tiene siete, se tiene diez, se tiene cinco, se tiene tres, se tiene cuatro. Ay, el primero era el que tenía cuatro. Vaya, se tiene cuatro minutos. Okay, let's go ahead and... Um, Set this timer for four minutes so you can complete these sentences, okay? Your four minutes begin right now.
Vaya, chicas, just let me know if you're ready. Si estamos ya listas para revisar el ejercicio. I'm ready. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead then and try to complete it. Let's see. It, in number one, it says open. What is the question that the person is asking, girls? Can you open the door? Please, right? Can you open the door, please? Muy bien. Cuando usamos can you, para sonar más polite, así más amables, podemos usar please. Y si estamos con alguien de la familia, can you open the door? Muy bien. What about number two? Question number two. Can you pass the salt, please? Very good. Can you pass the salt, please? Can you pass the salt, please? Okay, excelente. Number three. Can you turn off one moment, please? El, el radio, porque es the radio, right? Mm -hmm. Can you turn off the radio, please? Right? Can you turn off the radio? Because she's talking, ella está, sorry, ella está al teléfono y está sonando la radio. Entonces, she's asking, right? Can you turn off the radio, please? What about number four? Can you have phone number? Aquí le voy a dar una ayudadita. Porque le está diciendo que le dé su teléfono. Entonces, decimos en inglés, can I have your phone number, please? Ajá, pero muy, muy bien. Un buen intento. Can I have your phone number? ¿Me puedes dar tu número de teléfono? Borrow. ¿Cómo usamos este verbo? Eso está un poco más difícil, ¿verdad? Sí. Veamos. Alguien que haya intentado hacerla, ¿cómo les quedó? Can you eh, no. Can I uh -huh. borrow? Sí. Can you paper? Correcto, esa es la pregunta. Ok. Can I borrow the newspaper, please? ¿Verdad? ¿Puedo tomar prestado el periódico, por favor? Can I borrow es eso, puedo tomar prestado. Can I borrow the newspaper, please? Right? Y la última, use. Can I use your pen? Can I use your pen, right? Can I use your pen, please? Muy bien, excelente, chicas. Good job, okay? Now, luego viene un ejercicio que ya lo hicieron, muy probablemente ustedes dentro de la plataforma. Y pues ahorita vamos ya por el 5.9, okay, which is the knowledge check, okay? Now, in the knowledge check, right, um, you have uh, the information related to the first topic and you have this exercise, tienen este ejercicio. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it together. It says Kyla or Kayla is talking about things she can and can't do. Complete the sentences, then compare with the partner, okay? So she says, I can't draw. What about number two, girls? I can act. I can act. Okay, I can, I can act, muy bien. So oye como I cannot, pero es I cannot. Uh, number three? I can't sing. Muy bien, I can't. Sink. Okay, number four. I can fix cars. I can fix cars. Good job. Number five. I cannot play tennis. Well, actually, they look very, um, se, se ven así todo fresco, como dicen. Entonces, I can play tennis, right? What about number six? I can't ice skate very well. Muy bien, I can't ice skate very well. Number seven. I can play the piano. I can play the piano. And number eight. I can't cook at all. <laughs> I can't cook at all. <laughs> right, pobrecita la chica, ¿ok? Aunque sea algo, ¿verdad? Hay que aprender para... No, no. <laughs> ah, vaya, excellent, excellent. Obvio, ¿ok? Yeah, and, and, and actually, if we cannot... There we have YouTube, ¿verdad? Y con YouTube, ¿cómo hacer tal cosa? Ahí está todo, ¿ok? All what we have to do is to follow the instructions, ¿ok? Vaya, entonces ya ahora vamos ya a la práctica eh, siempre del, del um, relacionada con el tema, ¿verdad? Eh, esas son las prácticas de, que trae el libro, pero que no están 
directamente agregadas ahí, pero sí son del libro. Okay, entonces, let's go ahead and work with this one. It says, write questions and answers about these people, ¿verdad? Entonces, take a look at Andrew. Y luego dice, can Andrew fix a card? Y miremosle la carita, ¿verdad? No, he can't. What about Chris and Nick? ¿Cuál sería la pregunta que nosotros haríamos en este caso, chicas? Can Chris and Nick uh, swimming? Swim. Swim. Muy bien. Can Chris and Nick swim? Y la respuesta es... Yes. Yes, I... yes. They can. They can. Muy bien. Yes, they can. Apparently, they are very good swimmers, right? What about Kenji? Ken, Kenji, karate. No, it's not karate. Yoga. Miren ahí. Ah, muy bien. ¿Cómo decimos eso en inglés? Eh, yoga. ¿El verbo? <laughs> do. Muy bien. Entonces. Can Kenji do yoga? Excelente. Right. Can Kenji do yoga? And the answer is. Yes. He can. Yes, yes he, he can. can. Right? Very good. Okay, what about the last uh, number four? No es la última, de hecho. Number four, Juliet. Can Juliet cook? cook? Muy bien, muy bien. Pueden usar cook or bake. Cualquiera de las dos, okay? Y la respuesta es... No, no she can't. can't. No, she can't, right? Pobrecita se le quemó ahí lo que estaba haciendo. <laughs> number five, Erica, what do you think? What is the question? Can Erica play the violin? Very good. Can Erica play the violin? What do you think? No, she <laughs> can't. No, she can't. Creo que el violín es uno de esos instrumentos que son muy ruidosos cuando estamos aprendiendo y estamos practicando, right? <laughs> what about Natasha, number six? Can Natasha ride, ride horse? Muy bien. Can Natasha ride a horse? Very good. Can Natasha ride a horse? And the answer is? Yes, she can. Yes, she can. Very good. Excellent, girls. Now let's go ahead and move on to the following exercise, okay? Now, here, what we have to do is the following. It says, she can play the guitar, but she can't play the piano. Entonces, hablamos de lo que sí podemos y de lo que no podemos hacer, ¿ok? Eh, pongamos atención a estas porque ustedes van a armar también eh, cuatro oraciones como las que están acá, ¿de acuerdo? Now, what do you think about number two? Bueno, es más, creo que quizás no, no quiero entorpecer ahí la, 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 la sección de esas tres respuestas porque quiero que después hagan la de ustedes. Mejor les voy a dar tres minutitos porque, para que ustedes las hagan. Please let me know when you're ready. And use the information that you know, okay? Y luego, pues, vamos a, a, a revisar las respuestas. Si hacen match con la que yo tengo. Y si no, pues, no quiere decir que la que yo tengo es la respuesta correcta, correcta, ¿verdad? Pueden haber otras, otras opciones. Así que, let's go ahead and work on this one. And I'll give you three minutes. And your three minutes begin right now. <clears throat>
Uh -huh. Girls, are you ready? Estamos listas. No yet. No yet. Yeah. Yes. yes, okay, very good, bye. Let's go ahead and read number two. So, eh, vamos a ver. Can you please, Glenda, help me with number two? He can sing a song, mm -hmm. but he can dance. Very good, excellent, okay? So, he can sing or he can sing a song, but he can't dance. Very good. What about number three, Jasmine? She can play soccer. Mm -hmm. But she can play golf. Very good. That's correct, right? Um, she can play soccer, but she can't play golf. Very good. And the last one, Tanya? Uh, he can biking, right? Ride a bike. Ride a bike, mm -hmm. but he can't uh, drive. Very good, excellent. You can say he can he can ride a bike or a bicycle, but he can't drive a car. Muy bien, excelente. Okay, so there we have a uh, number four. Ahora bien, I need you girls. Necesito que ustedes también me digan, aunque sea un par de oraciones, okay? Usando esta estructura. Piensen en algo que sí pueden y que no pueden hacer. Bueno, dos cosas que sí puedan y dos cosas que no puedan hacer, okay? Think about it. O una, no importa. Una o dos cosas. It doesn't matter. Me avisan cuando están listas. It's just one, one or two sentences, okay? Uh -huh, chicas, ¿listas, listas? Yes. Vaya, vamos a escuchar sus eh, sentences, entonces. Eh, let's begin with you, Tania. Eh, I can play the piano, uh -huh. but I cannot play the guitar. Okay, very good. Only that, or do you have a, uh, a second sentence? No, only that. Very good, thank you. Glenda, what about you? I can play soccer, mm -hmm. but I can play um, bowling. Okay, I can play soccer, but I can't go bowling, creo que es. Mm -hmm. Muy bien. Oh. Okay. Yes, what about you, Jasmine? I can draw, but I can't dance. Okay, I can draw, but I can't dance. Muy bien. Excellent, girls. Now, 
eh, la forma en la que vamos a contestar es similar a la forma en la que aprendimos con el present simple, ¿verdad? ¿Se acuerdan que dependiendo del auxiliar, pues así vamos a, a responder en las preguntas cortas? Por ejemplo, si a mí me preguntan, do you like the guitar? Digamos, voy a mentir, no, I don't. Pero la verdad es que sí me gusta. No la puedo, no puedo tocar guitarra, pero sí me gusta cómo se escucha. Entonces, eh, do you like the guitar? No, I don't. Right? ¿Por qué? Porque el auxiliar con el que yo comencé la pregunta es, do you like the guitar? No, I don't. Right? Si me preguntan, who can fix a computer? ¿Cuál es la, la posible respuesta que me van a dar? Yes, I can. Porque dice who. Who can fix a computer? ¿Quién puede? My sister. Uh -huh. Ay, perdón. <laughs> Estaba leyendo la número tres y era la número dos. Sorry. Who do you play tennis with? My sister. Ajá, muy bien. Y la número tres sería I can or yes, I can. I can. I can. Ahí sí. ¿Por qué? Porque me están preguntando who. Who can fix a computer? I can. I can do it. Yo puedo. Yo puedo hacerlo. Pero si digo yes, I can, eh, no es una pregunta de sí o no, sino que es una WH question. Y recordemos que las WH questions buscan no un sí ni un no, sino más bien un detalle específico. ¿Quién? I can. ¿Verdad? Eh, where do you go snowboarding? In the mountains. In the mountains. Very good. ¿Por qué? Porque it's a place. Where? Where do you go? It's not boarding. In the mountains. Okay. Very good. Now, this one, it's um, it's a little bit longer, right? But ya nos vamos acercando a la última parte del vocabulario y un reading. Y ahí pues estamos finalizando la sección. Pero también vamos a revisar el el final exam, así que hay que dejar unos minutitos para eso y alguna otra práctica adicional con un listening. Pero le preguntan acá, ¿verdad? Can you do these things? Check can or can't, right? And this is for you, okay? This is um, for you, right? If you can do it, right? It says write sentences about the things in part eight, right? Aquí tenemos eh, las cosas que usted puede y no puede hacer. ¿Verdad? Dependiendo de lo que usted, pues, eh, pueda hacer o no, entonces ahí va a contestar. Pero vamos a ir contestando en, 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 de tal forma que la mayoría, pues, eh, las cosas que la mayoría podemos hacer. Por ejemplo, la primera, cook. Aquí ya está hecha la 1 y la 2, ¿verdad? I can't cook at all. I can't cook at all. I can dance really well. Ok, what about number three? Ok, number three, ¿qué creen ustedes que respondería esta persona? Can or can't? I can. I can, Buy because, exactly, the majority of people, they can drive a car. I mean, if you're an adult, right? What about number four? Play chess. What do you think? ¿Qué nos contestaría la persona? I can't. I can't. Mm -hmm, I can't. I can't play chess very well. Play the piano. I can't. Mm -hmm, I can't. Right? I can't play the piano, right? What about snor uh, snowboard? No parece que sea alguien que... Practice snowboard. What do you think? I can't. Yes, I can't snowboard at all, right? What about two languages? Speak two languages. I can. I can. Muy bien. I can speak two languages, right? Swim. I can swim. Well, in my case, in my case, I can't. I can't yeah. swim very well. But uh, probably the person can swim, right? But in my case, I can't swim very well. What about tell good jokes? Decir buenos chistes. I can. Okay, I can tell good jokes, right? And the last one, upload photos. 
I can upload mm -hmm. photos. Very good. I can upload photos, right? So as you can see, there are many, many things that we can express that we can or we cannot do, right? And 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 you name it. Ese si usted se las voy a pasar también allí en el chat. So you can have it. A ver, aquí está. There we go. Okay. So, ya nos estamos acercando al final, ¿verdad? Ya vamos aquí por el 5.11. I mean, 5.10. And it says, by the end of this class, you will learn vocabulary for discussing different abilities and talents. Okay? So, take a look, girls. We have here, it says, complete the word map with abilities and talents from the list. Okay? But we have four different categories. Okay? Those four different categories are the ones that we're going to take into account to classify them, okay? So let's go ahead and begin. Ahí está. Uh, we're going to begin with um, technical or mechanical, okay, uh, abilities. Aquí en el centro dice abilities and talents or abilities and talents, okay? We have musical or artistic, technical or mechanical. Uh, we have athletic and we have... Uh, other. Pero nos vamos a ir así. Vamos a irnos en orden de la lista. So, bake a cake está en other. Okay. What about designed a web page? ¿A dónde colocaríamos esto? Which category would you put it in? Technical or mechanical. Technical or mechanical, right? So, design a web page. What about do gymnastics? Where would you put it? Athletic. Athletic. Muy bien. What about fix a car? Technical or mechanical. Technical or mechanical. Very good. What about fix a motorcycle? Technical or, me or mechanical. Technical or mechanical. What about paint pictures? Musical or artistic. Muy bien. Musical or artistic. What about play chess? Athletic. Or other. Other, ¿verdad? Yo lo pondría en other, aunque atléticamente nuestro cerebro es el que está siendo ejercitado, ¿verdad? And what about play the violin? Musical. Musical. Or, or, musical uh, or artistic. Very good. What about ride a horse? Athletic. Athletic. Muy bien. What about sing English songs? Musical or artistic. Musical or artistic. What about surf? Athletic. Athletic. And what about tell good jokes? Other. Other, right? Very good. Okay, so here you have a set of phrases that you can use it whenever you are talking about abilities. Okay, that's something that uh, we are... Um, we need to keep in mind. Vaya. Y la última parte, pues, eh, it's a reading. This is the 5.12 section. It says, by the end of this class, you will read and discuss an article about four unique American races. You will also develop skills in reading for specific information. Okay? So let's go ahead and uh, work in the reading. If you want, I'm going to share it with you through the WhatsApp uh, section también por si no lo ve desde aquí aquí está igual acá lo tenemos it says rate the US race I'm sorry race the US how many different kinds of races can you think of read about your uh, read about four unique American races okay so here we have one two three and four okay so let's go ahead and read so I need uh, the first person. Well, Glenda, can you help me with number one? Um, el párrafo o la oración? Eh, la oración, el, perdón, el párrafo de la primera. Es que yo sé los párrafos, es, esta es la parte del reading, pero aquí puse uh -huh. solo los párrafos. Uh -huh. So number one. El párrafo entonces. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, climb the stair. Or... Climb, climb. climb. Mm -hmm. the, the stairs mm -hmm. of New York City's Empire State Building in the Empire 
yesterday we been from that. The clean is um ¿cómo se dice en one thousand fifty. One thousand fifteen feet um three hundred and twenty meters mm -hmm. um eighty six floors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or um one thousand five hundred and seventy five. One thousand thousand five hundred seventy-five. Five hundred seventy-five sticks. Winers can reach the top in just ten to eleven minutes. Can you? Okay, that's a lot, right? Now repeat after me. Repeat this for me, Glenda. Climb. Climb. Umpire. Umpire. Steps. Steps. Winners. Winners. Mm -hmm. Very good. Excellent. Okay. What about? Thanks. No, you're welcome. Thank you. What about the next one, Tanya? What about you? Take eight or ten days to race across America from Irving, California to Savannah, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Cross the entire USA in the in this two thousand. Uh, nine hundred mm -hmm. mile mm -hmm. uh, four thousand sixty six hundred six hundred uh, sixty seven mm -hmm. kilometer uh, bicycle race bicycle race bicycle race in this race there are no timeouts for sleep for eight to ten days racers can sleep only about three hours each day wow imagine they can just sleep three hours a day no <laughs> that's too much poor people okay Pobres participantes. okay so very good thank you so much uh, tanya what about the next one uh, jasmine number three okay praise on the excitement why the waters of the Arkansas River in river. the uh, river river in the down river race mm -hmm. mm, winners 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 complete um, the 25 seven point seven ¿cómo se dice ahí? miles Miles. O millas, ajá. Miles. Um, 41.5 kilometers. Mm -hmm. In the juice, in the juice to hours. In just two hours. In just two hours. Mm -hmm. This this is the longest. Longest? Longest, ajá. Uh -huh. Longest. Down rise, down, no. down, down river. Rise in the US. US. And first, in the US. In the, in the US. One person, one boat. 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 Take the chance. Take the challenge. Muy bien. Excellent. What about the last one? A volunteer. Yo pensé que había alguien más como que Troyen y Marisol. Volunteer para la última. No, no volunteer. Vaya, pues la leo yo. Dice, only possible in Alaska. Ah, por cierto, es Arkansas, ¿verdad? Arkansas en español, pero en inglés no, le, no pronunciamos la última S. <coughs> Así que es Arkansas River. Arkansas, ¿verdad? And then, only possible in Alaska. The, I think it's Idator Sled. Dog race, right? Sled is el, el cosito ese donde van jalando los perritos, ¿verdad? Uh, race from downtown Anchorage, right, to Nome over 1,150 miles. Uh, that means 1,850 kilometers through cold, wind, and snow.
Winners usually finish the course in nine to 12 days and receive cash prizes. Wow, that I like it, okay? Cash prizes. Now, uh, girls, let's go ahead and take a look at the, th the, the, um, the pieces of information that we need to, down here, okay? So it says that we need to find out, number one, the places, then the distances and the winning times, okay? What about number one? Empire State Building. What is the place? New York City. New York City. Muy bien. Okay. What is the distance? 1,050. Muy bien. 50 feet. Feet, ¿verdad? Yes. Okay. 1,050 feet or 320 meters. Muy bien. Winning times. Ten or two eleven minutes. Correct. Ten to eleven minutes. Muy bien. Race across America. Irving, California. Irving, California to Savannah, Savannah. Georgia. Right. Muy bien. Distances. Two thousand. Two thousand and what? And 900 miles, right? Or 4,000 mm -hmm. uh, 600 67 kilometers. Muy bien. What is the winning time? Three hours. How Eight many days? Ah, okay, okay. Ahí sí, ¿verdad? Eight to ten days because, wow, you have to cross, I mean, you have to, yeah, exactly, you have to cross the entire the United, the entire United States, right? So that's going to be eight to ten days. Down River Race, places. Arkansas River. Arkansas, right? Arkansas River, distance. 20, uh... 25.7 miles. Muy bien, 25.7 miles or 41.5 kilometers. Very good. And what is the winning time? Two hours. Two hours. Okay. What about this one? I do, I, I mean, that sounds weird. <laughs> but what is the winning time? Voy a buscar la pronunciación de esa palabra porque it makes me feel a little bit confused. What is the place? Alaska. Alaska, okay. And where? In, in which place? Anchorage, right? It's Anchorage to Nome in Alaska. What about the distance? 1,150 miles. Mm -hmm. Permítanme que no les escucho, permítanme. Ahora sí, se me bajó todo el volumen. Now I can hear you, perdón. What about the distance? 1,150 miles. Ajá, lo siento, chicas, es que fíjense que hay un botón. Entonces, ese botón eh, ya me pasó como tres veces. Ese botón, eh, de repente, como es bien largo el, la, el cable de los headsets, se queda trabado en la silla, en el, en el brazo de la silla. Entonces, yo de repente eh, pregunto y, me, y no oigo nada. And it's because of that, este tiene el volumen. Así de que, perdón si no les escuchaba, pero era yo el problema. ¿Ok? Eh, correcto, ¿verdad? What about winning time? Nine to twelve days. Nine to twelve days. Muy bien. Excelente. Ok. Entonces, ya en, exactamente en esa parte de 5.14, ahí pues terminamos lo que es el knowledge. Ok. Now, ¿qué es la última parte que tenemos? Pues es el final exam. 
¿ok? Entonces, en el final exam, si usted pues, se ve, ve aquí, ese, ese ejercicio el que ustedes pues, acaban de hacer es el que ya nosotros hicimos, ¿verdad? Eh, acá, después, del, después del, um, de ese knowledge check, viene el examen, ¿ok? And here it says instructions. Listen to four people describe their homes. Number the pictures from one to four and then type the numbers in letters. Do not need a capital letter or a period, ¿ok? Eh, en este caso, pues, eh, yo lo hice con otro grupo. No sé si ustedes han tenido problemas con este ejercicio. ¿Ya lo hicieron? ¿O tuvieron algún inconveniente? Ya estuvo. Ok, ya estuvo. Entonces, ya lo hicieron. Vaya, entonces, acá todo lo que tenían que hacer nada más era eh, digitar, ¿verdad? You have to type the number. Ok, you have to type the number based on the description. Las descripciones estaban bien sencillas, ¿verdad? No estaban eh, 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 rebuscadas, ¿ok? Vaya. In letter B, you have to complete a conversation, ¿ok? So, the instructions... Uy, la batería. Wait. Give me one moment. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Ahí está. Okay, so then, right, uh, the instructions were to complete the conversation with some or any. So you have uh, you have already practiced a lot with me. You practice a lot with some and any. ¿verdad? Practicaron mucho, mucho conmigo, some and any. And all what you have to do is to uh, read, right, and, and complete. So let's go ahead and do this one together. It says, um, Amanda, the store doesn't have any fresh salad, okay? Uh, Adam, well, we have lots of tomato. Let's make any or some. Some. Okay, let's mix. Okay, do we have any any lemon? No, we need to buy some. Some. We need some. Some lettuce too. Oh, I don't want any any lettuce. I hate lettuce, right? Oh, well, then let's get some some olives. No, I don't want some olives in my fresh salad. But let's put. Um. Bueno, como es afirmativa, some. Let's put some cucumber in it. Cucumber sounds good. Porque recordemos, uy, me equivoqué aquí, perdón, era any. Sorry, alguien me dijo any, yo creo que yo some escribí. Vale, entonces acá, ¿verdad? Si ustedes se fijan, todo lo que teníamos que recordar era que usamos some con oraciones afirmativas y que usamos any con oraciones negativas y preguntas. ¿Verdad? Entonces, esa es la forma en la que nosotros trabajamos, ¿verdad? The sum and any. Then it says in letter C, you have to choose the correct adverb of frequency. Okay, you choose the correct adjective to complete the sentence, okay? Never I play soccer on the weekends or on weekends. Is it correct or incorrect, girls? Correct or incorrect? Never I play soccer on weekends. Incorrect. Incorrect. Yeah, because si yo estoy usándolo en una oración afirmativa, ¿verdad? Siempre va a ir eh, eh, antes del verbo. I never play soccer on weekends. Y decíamos que la única que se puede mover al principio, en medio o al final es... ¿Cuál es el adverbio de frequency que se puede mover? Sometimes. Sometimes. Som sometimes. Muy bien. They usually study English at night. ¿Correct or incorrect? Correct. Correct. Sometimes she feels very tired. ¿Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. Incorrect. Sometimes she feels very tired. Well, 
we were saying that sometimes, sometimes sí se puede mover. Sí se puede mover al principio, sí se puede mover acá al medio, sí se puede mover al final. Okay? Okay. Entonces yo puedo decir, she, fe she sometimes feels tired. Sometimes she feels tired or she feels, she feels very tired sometimes. He often call her in the morning. Correct or incorrect? Correct. You listen to me hardly ever. Uh, correct. Correct. Can I say, you listen to me hardly ever? Mm, no, right? Porque como hardly ever es un adverbio de frecuencia, tengo que traérmelo para acá. You hardly ever listen to me. ¿Verdad? A menos que sea sometimes, ¿verdad? Entonces, sí. let's go ahead and check. As you can see, all of them are correct. ¿Ok? I mean, lo que nosotros hemos contestado. Luego tenemos en letter D, choose the correct meaning of the WH question. ¿Verdad? Chicas, ¿cuándo usamos who? ¿Para qué usamos? Time, place, people, choice, things, or objects. People. People. ¿Cuándo usamos where? Place. Con place. ¿Cuándo usamos when? Time. Time. ¿Cuándo usamos which? Thing, object. Mm, no, no, actually, we use it with choice. choice. Porque, por ejemplo, si yo le pregunto, Which one do you like? The red one or the blue one? ¿Cuál te gusta más? ¿La azul o la roja? Hablando de una camisa, por ejemplo. Entonces, cuando ustedes usan which, es porque tienen, eh, hay, hay que elegir. ¿Ok? Y what lo usamos para? Think objects. Think or objects. Muy bien. And as you can see, all of them are correct. Luego, tenemos el uso de can and can't. ¿Verdad? Aquí ustedes pues van a leer la oración y van a agregar ya sea can or can't. Y acá tenemos un fill in the blanks. Ask and complete the conversations. ¿Ok? So this one is very easy. Solamente es poner en práctica toda la parte que vimos de, de, de uh, present simple. ¿Verdad? Eh, en este caso ya sea oración afirmativa, oración negativa, pregunta y respuesta corta. ¿Verdad? Entonces, that's what you have to do in the exercise, I mean, in the, in, the, in the final exam. ¿Ok? No sé si tienen alguna pregunta con respecto a esto. No. Vaya, perfecto. Igual, ¿verdad? Con, con la parte de la plataforma, si ya terminaron, creo que incluso ayer alguien me mencionó que ya estaban los certificados, ¿verdad? Si usted ya finalizó, entonces no hay ningún problema, ¿verdad? Ahí estamos completos y, y si ya pues mandó la información, más que excelente, ¿verdad? Entonces ahorita nada más, solo denme un momentito, voy a pasar la asistencia. Fíjense que al principio vi, vi dos personas más, no sé si fueron, fue mi imaginación o qué, <ríe> Pero vi a Jenny Marisol, que ella nos contó que está teniendo problemas con, con su conexión. Y también Pero vi a alguien. Ah, vaya, aquí está. Ya pudo entrar. Ah, vaya, perfecto. Sí. Pero ha estado entrando y saliendo, ¿verdad? Por lo mismo. Sí, sí me ha costado. Sí, que lo siento, Jenny. Vaya, y de ahí vi a alguien más. Vi a, creo que alguien que se llamaba Carla. ¿Verdad? No pasé, no pasé la lista al principio, entonces no vi bien. Permítanme. ¿Dónde están ustedes? A ver. Aquí está. Deme un minuto. No, deme unos segundos porque... Un minuto es mucho tiempo, ya voy. Aquí está. Lunes 10. Ah, pero no les pusieron. No les pusieron esta de acá. Vaya, voy a tomar la captura de pantalla porque no les pusieron la fecha de hoy en la asistencia. Así de que yo me quedo acá con la captura y voy a buscar porque vi a alguien que se llamaba Carla. O no sé si alguien entró con el nombre que no era también, ¿verdad? 
Entonces, este, me voy a quedar hasta acá, chicas, pero thank you very much. Gracias por hacer el esfuerzo, gracias por acompañarme y pues les deseo lo mejor en su próximo módulo, ¿verdad? Y que sigan aprendiendo. Así que nice meeting you and see you around. Cuídense. Ya sabe, Tania. You're welcome. Sí, cuídense y ojalá nos veamos pronto. Dice Tania, sí, claro que sí. Ojalá que más adelante se pueda dar la oportunidad. Así que cuídense muchísimo, muchísimo y por favor no dejen de practicar, no dejen de seguir con sus clases. Cuídense. Bye, bye. Bye. Bye.